Hello to my beauties and cuties. You spend a lot of time doing a lot of research, a lot of hours, and a lot of money building out a van. And then there are little mistakes that you can make where you have to redo things. So today I am going to tell you some of the mistakes that I made. So hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I made if you end up having a van build. I apologize if you hear wind and road noise. I am parked on the side of the road. I am on the Oregon coast. So next week, check back and you'll see some of those adventures. But what I'd like to do today is talk to you before you get on the road. I don't want you making the mistakes that I've made. So the first thing that I noticed that I broke I was four things away from having a complete van. Right as I'm at the very end, about to complete the van, this reading light went out. The reading light on the left, it went out. And then about a week, two weeks later, the reading light on the right side went out. And I do believe that what I did is I bought a cheap $5 from a store called Five below. So about this 10 foot charger thinking if some of the USB outlets in the front which may I haven't tested it but I think some of those may not be working properly in the actual van. So I thought I'd get a 10 foot so that I can charge it in the back which I know works because I put it together. A huge bad idea. If you have an Apple iPhone use Apple products. What I did is I used it to charge on this one it got really hot and I think it blew the light bulb. I haven't checked it, but I did buy new lights so that I could rewire the lights, but both the lights were shot. Luckily it was only a $20 issue. The other thing I noticed is that nothing was charging. I couldn't tell if there was a problem with my solar or the DC to DC, and it actually ended up being a problem on both. I believe what my issues with my charging, well, I had two issues. Once I got to my home base, I had, I believe 1% on one battery and about 3% on the other battery. And I had driven about, I don't know how many hours. And it was in the hot sun. It was a super bloom. When I was coming back after seeing the super bloom, I had noticed that I had no power once I got back. It was dark but it, the van had been in the sun all day. I was hiking out doing the super bloom. I had gone to a different location earlier in the day. So it, I'd ar I had already driven about 90 minutes earlier. And once I got back that night, I had no power. I wasn't even in the van using power. There was nothing turned on. So it should have had a full charge. What I noticed is that the inverter had turned off. My LED lights still worked, but my inverter turned off. So I thought I had had a problem with my inverter what the problem was with the DC to DC charging is my battery had died two different weekends in a row. My house, the battery on the actual van died. So I had someone jump my battery off, two different people jump my battery off. I believe the first time when it got jumped off, it was connected to the actual DC to DC cables that come back here and it blew my fuse. So I learned a trick from my friend that works at a battery shop and you don't connect to the actual battery in these vans. So this is where you will charge your battery if your van battery dies. Don't hook it to the battery under, the, under your feet. Hook it under right here. Positive there. Okay, if I ever have a bad battery, this is where I connect it. Positive. Yep, positive there. And then the negative, that's yep. my ground. Never it. jump my van from the inside. Because yep. it will ruin the DC to DC. Yep. <laughs> well, not ruin the DC to DC, but it'll stop working. It'll blow a fuse. I washed my solar panels and it still was not charging. So I was looking at all the connections to my solar panels and I noticed that one was really loose. Um, Johnny saw it a couple, about a week ago when we first met up at 023 and it was actually hot wires. So I could have caused a fire. So if you notice something loose, don't say I'll do it and I'll fix it in a week when I have time. Do it as soon as possible because I didn't realize that the wires were hot. 
so I could have caused a lot of damage there. I believe what happened was I used too big of, I think I used one size up on the, the lug. So I have the proper lug. So that has been replaced. And now my solar is pulling without any problems. The DC to DC fuse was, it's changed. I went to an auto shop. So now I keep extra ANL fuses on hand. I had a 300 ANL fuse pop with the inverter, which I still have to change those cables out. Okay, so that's my solar issue, the DC to DC. So those are my charging issues that I was having. So make sure you use the right size lugs on your wires. If you notice it's, it's loose, take care of it. Don't put it off. And the other issue that I had was I had my plumbing done out in Joshua Tree. So I took it, the van down the Joshua Tree, met up with Johnny, Johnny's Journey, Midwest van, van Builders, and she actually did all my plumbing for me. And I guess with all my research, I'm learning how to do the stuff, but I'm not learning how not to do certain things. So that's why I'm doing this video today. Once I returned from Joshua Tree, I took it out on a test run. I went to Napa and went to Benicia. We were having this, we we're having this abnormal weather in my home area. It never freezes in Sacramento and there was freeze warnings in effect. So I, what I did is I emptied all the water out and I emptied it out of the faucet down outside. Instead of having it drain out, it's going through out of the faucet. And what I did is I emptied it all the way to where air got in and ruined the pump. I didn't know that you can't keep the pump, you can't keep the faucet on or you don't turn the faucet on when the pump isn't running. So that's one thing. So I did that also. So I don't know if it was that that caused the issue or if I let it run dry and somehow air got into the pump and I broke it. So I was able to use it that one trip, which was Napa and Benicia. It was a two day, I stayed two different nights. So it, it, I used it on that weekend. And then the next trip, once I came back from New York, I went to a hip camp, a campground, and I was, I had no water. Make sure that when you're draining your water, if you, if it sounds like there's the water, you're at the end of the water, if you feel air come out, turn off the faucet immediately. Do not run the water without the pump on. Air gets in and it'll ruin it. We did, I worked with Time for Exploring. We spent six hours one day trying to self prime or trying to prime it. Okay, it works. We got this little thing. I, su I shut mine off. That water pump and we couldn't get it to work. So I just bought a new one. So I used it once or actually twice, half of the trip in Joshua Tree and then one trip. So that was a big $70 mistake right there. So don't make those mistakes. And if I make any other mistakes on while I'm out on the road, I will definitely share that with you because like I said at the beginning of this video, once you put all the research and time and energy and money into the build, you don't want to ruin it or mess anything up or have to redo anything. So yeah, those are some things that hopefully it'll save you some money. But I hope you enjoyed this video and got some helpful hints out of it. Check back next week in my adventures in Oregon. Thank you. There's people in the background.